Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. However, this is a very valuable video on InRange because this is our very first R&D video for the new What Would Stoner Do 2020 project. Right. There are a number of factors that we want to look at improving for the new version. Improving and modifying and all that. A lot of things have changed in three years, right? Yep. And so we're going through a new process of going and rechecking all of our work mm -hmm. and hopefully coming up with an even better solution for 2020. One of the things we have to do is check into barrels again. Right. We have some new options in barrels now. Yep. Uh, we have a barrel from Ballistic Advantage, mm -hmm. which is not quite as thin of a pencil barrel, but is a pencil barrel. Very close. Um, and it takes a standard flash hider. It does. Compared to... The new facts on equivalent of what we did in 2017. Right. So one of the issues that they had last time was supplying sufficient quantities of barrels. Yes. Like people wanted to build the guns and the barrels were often unavailable. And so what they've done to salute, to solve that is they now have a flash hider that is integral to the barrel and can be manufactured in the same process instead of having to make, make flash hiders separately and then attach them and then pin them and weld them and do all the compliance. You stuff. mean there's a thing about ease of manufacture to be able to mass produce things it's, for a market? It's weird how that works. Interesting. Yes. On that note, as well as the original three-prong flash hider, while it worked well, it did, was fragile. Yeah, yours broke, actually. It got broken okay. at Desert Brutality. Um, uh, Yari was using it, and he threw it to the ground, which is what we do with these matches. And guess what? There's nothing to support that mass, and one of the teeth, whoop. Yeah. And that's why prong flash hiders, ooh. Are you going to suggest that there were prong flash hiders before, and they went away for valid reasons? Yeah, I am. And, and, and you know what? It worked really well on the gun, but um, it is fragile. Yeah. So. So uh, what we're going to do today is we want to rerun the test that we did originally with a Colt SP-1 and a Faxon barrel about heat relief, uh, heat stress, well, stress relieving barrels for when they get hot. So the, one of the problems with original pencil barrels was when the barrel got hot, the group would get bigger, which is expected and will happen, but it would also shift in unpredictable ways. And that was because there were stresses left in the barrel that uh, when the barrel got hot, they acted on the barrel and, and bent it. Not, the barrel literally flexes under right. heat. Not visibly, but no. enough that you'll move your group. What was it? We found like four or five inches. It was, at 100 yeah, yards. It was four MOA or a little over four MOA of shift. Right. So one of the things that we did with the original What Would Stoner Do is we went to a pencil barrel because we now have the manufacturing processes to make one that doesn't have that problem. Well, so we, we didn't know that at the time though, right? Like, right. Well, so Faxon said they did. They said they did, but we had to prove it. And so right. the thing was when Stoner and crew came out with the AR-15, Sullivan, all those guys, that pencil barrel concept made a lot of sense for a light, handy carbine. Right. But when it got under heat, guess what? You're missing stuff at 300 right. yards because you just fired a magazine over there and now your zero is four minutes right and high yeah. and you no longer can hit any targets. Right. And that made bad blood in the AR-15 world, including the military, for the concept of a pencil barrel. And they just kept making these things fatter and fatter and fatter and adding weight. Right. But now we can make them and we proved that they actually do work. Right. So the question is, does Faxon's new barrel still work that well? Does Ballistic Advantage work that well? Mm -hmm. So uh, these are not what would Stoner do rifles. Uh, these are from uh, Carl's, <laughs> Carl's workshop of horrors. It's a hodgepodge uh, <laughs> of stuff. So uh, yeah. this one, in fact, I know people are going to notice this. Yeah. Uh, we originally also looked at 18-inch barrels. We did. And so we had a free float tube for an 18-inch barrel, and we long ago decided 14.5 with a flash hider is a better solution. So in order to have another part to work with experimentally, we uh, cut this guy off. This was an 18-inch tube, and it's now a 14.5. We needed a free float uh, handguard for this testing purposes, yeah. and since I didn't have the right length, the hacksaw fixed the problem. Yep. yep. Um, and I have no sights. You don't have sights. What's wrong with you? How do you shoot a gun without sights? Well, shooting's easy. Yeah, that's true. Oh, hitting. Hitting. Hitting's a little harder. And this the reason for this is we're trying to take all the variables out of this project. Yeah. So in that regard, we're using our, the Hollow Sun we originally standardized in 2017 with actually the new Vortex 3X micro magnifier. We'll talk about that later. Different thing. But we're going to shift the optics from one gun to the other so that right. everything is apples to apples. Same sighting system, same magnifier. We have to re-zero when we do that. But we're going to make sure everything's the same. Same triggers, too. Yes, they're both SLT triggers. Yeah. This one happens to be an SLT1. This one happens to be an SLT2. Regardless, they're exactly the same performance. One's a flat trigger, one's a curved trigger. Yep. Nothing different there. And we're using stock American Eagle M855 62 grain ammunition. We didn't go buy whiz bang Black Hills 69 grain super super match anything. Right. Because guess what? Most people are going to shoot American Eagle M193 or M855 or some equivalent thereof. So let's test the guns with what's really on the market. And we are not looking for group size. We're looking to see. In fact, here is our procedure. We're going to shoot five rounds uh, to get a group and it, it'll be mostly in the center. But uh, once we have that five round group, we're then going to dump a 30 round mag through the gun as fast as possible. Just 
that'll heat the barrel up real nicely and then we'll fire a second five round group and what we want to see is does the second group once the barrel's hot move we know it'll get bigger but we want it to get bigger and stay in the same place yep so if they do that means that the stress relief has been done properly correct and that either that these pencil barrels are performing the way we would expect them to All right, so we've got Carl's first group with the ballistic advantage. We're gonna go ahead and circle these guys so that we can identify them after we heat the gun up and fire a second group. Uh, it's not, not perfectly in the center, but we're re-zeroing optics for each of these and it's barrel testing. So what we're curious about is where will the second group be relative to this one? All right, Carl will now heat the barrel up with a 30 round mag dump into the dirt and then fire a second five round group and we'll see what the shift is. Oh, I can see the heat in your eyes. I want to move. All right, so what we have here is one, two, three, four, five. This is kind of actually exactly what we would expect from a properly heat treated barrel, which is to say the group got bigger uh, when the barrel got hot, which we expect. Um, part of that's the barrel itself. Part of it, frankly, might be Carl with the heat mirage having a hard time getting the dot in the exact right place. However, the group stayed exactly in the same point. The center, the center of this group stayed in exactly the same place as that first group, which means we don't have any wonky stresses that are coming out in the barrel and causing it to shift. And that's the problem with heat treating from the 60s that led to the abandonment of pencil barrels in early ARs. So good on ballistic advantage there. Now let's try Faxon's new barrel. Let's go see where those landed. All right, so for the Faxon, we have almost exactly the same thing. Here's our five shot group. Let's circle these so we can identify them. A Little bit low. Again, we're re-zeroing optics between each of these. So uh, by the way, we wanna make sure that we have the same consistent thing. So we're moving the optic from gun to gun. Um, now let's uh, heat it up and see if the pattern disperses. And the Mirage is back. All right, so we actually see exactly the same thing here with the Faxon barrel. So our first group is right here, right there. And once the barrel gets hot, the group expands to include this at the top, these two at the bottom, and then these two guys. However, the center of the group stays in exactly the same place. What that tells us is we know the group will expand when the barrel gets hot, um, but the barrel heat treat is proper and it doesn't start to shift in unpredictable directions. So both Faxon and Ballistic Advantage performed very well. Like that's exactly what we would hope to see from this. So that means we have some decisions to make. All right, well, those both did great. Actually, they both did exactly what they want, what we wanted and kind of indistinguishably well. 
it goes to show you that, you know, when they were originally designing the AR-15, they were a little ahead of their time. The, the stress relieving wasn't there yet. Right. Um, but nowadays, if you're going with a quality manufacturer with a quality barrel, which we've already now proven, Faxon and Ballistic Advantage are both of those types of manufacturers, uh, a pencil barrel does not shift zero under heat stress. Right. And that is a huge difference from what was going on then. And that guise that a pencil barrel is not viable, it should no longer be the narrative. Right. It just um, has to be a properly made one. That said, what are we going to do? Well... There is one big difference between the Faxon barrel and the Ballistic Advantage barrel, and that is weight. It is. The Ballistic Advantage barrel is about four ounces heavier. Now, people in the audience go, four ounces? That doesn't sound like anything. But four ounces is a quarter of a pound. Right. You could have a rifle or a rifle and a burger. Yep. And <laughs> believe it or not, one of the things that's wonderful about the Wobbit Stoner Do Build, which cannot really come through in video, is the balance of the gun. Yeah. Everything out front is weighted just right for everything in the back, and it becomes a perfect center of mass. And when you fire the gun, it just doesn't move around, even yeah. though it's an extremely lightweight gun. Yeah. And uh, a little extra four ounces in the front actually does throw it off it, a little bit. Yeah, it does make a difference. So. Yep. So I want to say, Ballistic Advantage, I've never worked with you guys before, but I would absolutely recommend your barrels. You made a quality product. We put this through a pretty grueling test and proved that you made something that's an excellent barrel on the market. Yeah. But for our purposes of the What Would Stunner Do 2020 build, we got to go with the lighter weight. we got to go with the extra four ounces, the extra less four ounces, I should say. Right. Um, and therefore, Faxon, once again, uh, is kind of the winner for this project. Yep. All right, well, let's go get ourselves some Faxon barrels. Yep, and let's build some What Would Stoner Do 2020s. Guys, thanks for watching.